So today we're going to be colour grading S-Log3 footage in Premiere Pro, but there's a little bit of a twist, mate. We're going to be using the brand new Logitech MX Creative console. So if I find my master frame about there, I'm then going to go over on my keypad, hit the conversion LUT for S-Log3, then I'm going to go over onto my third page right here, and I'm going to click on the actions ring. That is now going to bring up this ring of different colour grading features, and all I've got to do is hover my mouse over these different areas and adjust them with the actions dial. This is an absolute game changer and it's just completely revolutionized the way that I edit and the way that I color grade footage. So this video is sponsored by Logitech, but I think you guys are gonna absolutely love the new Creative Console. So the MX Creative Console doesn't actually need to be used in a creative environment. You can literally just use it on your desktop for whatever you want. I've set up my keypad to have Google Chrome, my emails, YouTube, Artlist. I'm obviously always on Artlist checking for tracks and whatever for videos and whatnot. I've got my Finder there. I've also got CoinMarketCap because I simply can't keep my eyes off the charts. I've got Spotify and obviously all you have to do is click on one of your different icons that you've personalized on here. I've set this up personally for me. So you can literally personalize this in so many different ways. I've stuck the Logitech Options Plus app over here on my third page and it is just so easy to just drag and drop the different applications that you want on your keypad and we can do that for all of our different applications, all of our different softwares and obviously for me Premiere Pro is a really big one. For me on my very first page I want all of my simple stuff mate, my projects, effects, effect control, stuff that I want to click on really fast and easy and if we go over to the dial pad we can actually select all of the different settings in terms of how fast we want our dial to spin, our roller at the top, and we can also customize all of our different buttons for all of the different applications that we wanna use. And I've set mine up for Premiere Pro to work really well for general cutting and also color grading, because that's obviously what I love doing. So let's head back over to Premiere Pro, and I'm gonna show you guys how I personally use and have set up the MX Creative Console for my personal needs. So obviously over here, we've got the dial pad, which you can set at any speed that you want. I've got mine set at quite a slow speed, so I can really go in and dial in those keyframes. You've obviously got the roller up here, which zooms in and out of the timeline, which is nice when you really wanna go in tight, adjust really nicely in them keyframes. I've got my razor tool over here and my selection tool here because a lot of the times I'm cutting, I'm selecting, zooming right into my timeline, I'm getting that perfect keyframe that I need and then I'm using the razor tool to cut that keyframe and then I'm using my selection tool to move things around. And then over here, I've got my track forward selection tool so I can move my entire timeline right here and have really quick access to the tools that I'm using on a regular basis. And down here, I've got my play and stop button. This just makes life so much easier for me, just playing and stopping, scrubbing through, hitting play as and when I need it. It just makes life so much easier. And I've just found that it really takes out a lot of the friction when it comes to editing. I've really got used to this now and it's just such a more natural way to edit for me. Keyboards at the end of the day were never built to edit videos. They were obviously built to type. It just makes life so much easier in the edit. Just finding the right keyframe, everything feels so natural now instead of using a keyboard. So let's head over to the keypad and you can see here I've got three different pages with all of the different things that I personally need when it comes to editing. So across the top I've got my projects because a lot of the times I've got so many different panels up here, I have to click on this arrow and find the bin or the effects panel or the effects control panel just so that I can go into that window and it actually takes a lot of the friction out with it just being here. So if I wanna find my effects, which is literally tucked away over here, I can just click on that instead of trying to find it. And if I want my effect controls, boom, over there. If I want to import new footage, I click on that. If I go on projects, adjustment layer, I literally create a new adjustment layer just like that. It is so damn easy. And if I'm on a particular clip that I simply want to add my LUT to, I just click on LUT and then click it again. And then I've actually there added my own personal LUT. And then if I click that again, it takes us back to no LUT at all. One more time, now I've got the correction LUT for S-Log3 so that I can build my grade from here if I don't wanna use my own personal LUT. And obviously you can put whatever LUTs you want in that folder to make it so much easier. Click over one more and we've got the actions ring. A lot of people say that they've got the action ring down here, but I really like that to play and pause. It just feels so natural to have play and pause right there. But I've stuck the action ring over here. So if I just click on that one, usually I'm bringing down my shadows because usually I expose my S-Log3 
really far to the right, obviously not clipping because I don't really want to lose my highlights, but I like to expose to the right because I find that I get the best image out of my Sony camera. And simply using these different features on here is such a nice way to color grade, man. And obviously, if you click over here on Lumetri Color, you can actually bring up all of these different functions. Let's go back over to our actions ring. And every time we move this, you'll notice over here on Lumetri Color, all of these areas move. So it's actually really nice to have a really precise dial on all of those different sliders. Sliding those with a mouse really doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel natural. What does feel natural is using this dial wheel right here. It is honestly a game changer. I couldn't imagine going back to just using my mouse and my keyboard now. So I really hope that this actually solidifies itself into my editing setup because end of the day, it's just spice things up a bit for me as well. I'm not gonna lie to you, I've been doing this for like 14 years and to be able to do something in a completely different way is kind of like re reignited my love for editing again, if you know what I mean, which is to be honest, quite a nice feeling. So let's go on to another shot. Let's stick our conversion LUT on there. So we'll go LUT. That's my LUT. Oh, let's see if we can make this look pretty similar to my LUT with the conversion LUT over there. So actions ring, we wanna bring things right down. I'll tell you what we will do. If we go over here and then we go over to comparison view, if I, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Let's cut these and over here, if I go onto my Lumetri color, then we'll go and stick on my LUT on this one. So that is gonna be the look that we're gonna try and achieve with the actions wheel. Obviously, we're gonna to have to change a few other hues and saturations, but if I get us onto that keyframe there on our comparison view, and then we're gonna come over to here. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and match this frame here with my official LUT, which I personally am a massive fan of. I just think it looks really nice. I love the skin tones, I love the warmth. So let's see if we can do that over here with the exact same track, but just using the actions ring. So let's click on the action ring right there. First of all, let's bring our shadows down so that they're looking pretty similar. We need to bring our overall exposure down so it kind of matches. Let's bring up our highlights because we want to make that thing zing a bit. Obviously, we've got quite a lot of warmth over here as well on the left. So let's see if we can add that in. And also we're looking a little bit green. So that is probably as far as we're going to be able to go without going in to our hue versus hue saturation levels. So let's go over here and see if we can start to drag our blues up a bit so that we can start to match the rest. I think what we're going to have to do is go over into creative and add some warmth into our highlights. There we go, we're somewhere around there. We're getting a little bit closer. Now let's go back over to our curves, bring this down a little bit so it's not too green, but you can see those nice dark purples in the water need bringing up to blue a little bit without changing our skin tones. That doesn't look too bad to me. What I'm gonna do is bring those highlights and the warmth in those highlights down a little bit. That to me looks pretty damn good. I feel like we're pretty damn close there. So let's come back off of our comparison view and then we can head over onto another shot. Rebecca's gonna absolutely kill me for showing you like that shot right there. <laughs> I love that video. Um, right, let's crack on to another frame. Where do we wanna go? Let's come out of here and let's have a little look. Next frame. Mm, okay, we've got some lovely colors over in these shots here. Yeah, this is the one. Right, let's see what we can do here. So first of all, as usual, we're gonna add a LUT. This is obviously the conversion LUT, that's my one. Let's see if we can make a nice shot out of the conversion LUT. So we'll go over to the actions ring Let's bring down the shadows, mate. To be honest, it's all a little bit high at the top anyway. So let's bring that down. Bring those shadows right down. I want to punch quite a bit of saturation in there. Oh, that shot looks pretty damn good straight off of the bat. Tiny bit of warmth in there. 
Tiny bit more saturation. Don't want to push it too far. Skin's starting to look a bit funky. Mate, to me, that looks pretty damn good. If we bring our highlights down, we'll get a bit more detail in the highlights. Shadows have got a ton of room. We can even bring our blacks down a little bit. That looks pretty damn good to me, and we haven't even really adjusted the colors too much. S-Log3, when you use it correctly and you use the correction LUTs and whatnot, really does grade up like such a treat. So let's go on to, yeah, that looks nice. Let's see if we can go here, back over to this. Let's bring our overexposure down. Let's bring them shadows down for a bit of contrast. Ooh, yeah, that looks nice. And you can completely customize the actions ring in the Logi options tab. So if we go over to keypad and then we go over to Premiere Pro, We've got our actions ring right here. Obviously, I've got mine set to all of my color grading defaults because this is how I like to set mine up. But no matter where you want them, you can just drag and drop them, move them around wherever you want. I don't want to change them too much because my edits are going to be looking a bit funky if I'm changing the wrong ones. But it just shows you just how customizable this thing is when it comes to color grading, when it comes to editing anything in general. And the nice thing about it is the fact that they're so small and compact, I could genuinely travel with these two things. They're so small, they're so light. And this thing actually runs on AAA batteries and lasts for 18 months, mate. And the keypad connects via USB-C to your laptop because obviously we've got like an LCD screen on here and whatnot, assuming that's gonna use a lot more power. And it's just such a nice addition to the entire MX ecosystem. And the entire MX console is only $199 and it comes with three months of complimentary Adobe Creative Cloud usage. And that's not only for new subscribers, that's for people that already own Creative Cloud. So I've just got myself three months for free. Thanks Logitech. And the Creative Console is actually made with over 50% recycled plastic. So you know that it's coming from a good spot. I think there might be a few color grading chills pending with the MX Creative Console. If you wanna go and check out the MX Creative Console, I'll leave a link in the first line of my description. Anyway, you lot, thanks so much for watching. And as always, mate, I'll be catching you lot in the next one, mate. Bosh.